I, I looked for flowers, but it was too late. Kofamal does not seem to involve the, the blooming stall. Um, what, what I'd like to do is just put a few questions to David that I think may be of general interest. He's assured me there will be no speeches tonight, so a lot of these will be answered with simple yes or no, or come on. But, <laughs> but the first one is that uh, the, the neural, the idea of the neural synthesis, I remember having a meeting with you and, and some of the other members of composers inside electronics in New York, uh, must have been about uh, three or four years ago, in which the idea of, of um, trying to build a neural network system for you for sound generation was first introduced. And uh, it was last year that I first read of the work that was coming out with this. Um, neural network programming, it, I, I know it's being used by a number of people for generating control structures for music, but you're the only person I know who's actually using this technology to generate sound with. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how this works? How you do it? <laughs> it isn't easy to uh, uh, get a precise uh, uh, picture of, of uh, what's happening. The uh, uh, this piece is the first. Uh, I, uh, I'm expecting to go on with it. Uh, actually, uh, I did another piece which I, I gave to the to the Cunningham Dance uh, Company. That that was the very first one, and uh, then I. That piece was entitled uh, Neural Network Plus, and I decided that, uh, that, that since I had more to, do, to uh, accomplish with the same uh, equipment, uh, that I would make the next series of, of compositions with a different title. So. Uh, 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 Nick tells me that this is uh, neural synthesis number eight. But, but my that, that was the, uh, the, the number you gave me. Yes, years. yes, but my engineer told, tells me it's number 12. Um, <laughs> this is one for the history books. So it's, uh, you know, I've lost track of the... Uh, uh, it, it always uh, <coughs> comes out uh, uh, very differently. And it's... Uh, Actually, it's due to the, the manner of, uh, of activating the electronics. Uh, uh, first off, the, uh, you have to realize that this uh, sound material is not produced uh, with any external input whatsoever. Nothing is uh, exciting uh, the, the, the circuits in, into, into action. It, it's all done with, with a, uh, <clears throat> and a feedback uh, network, which is very complex. And uh, uh, it isn't, uh, uh, well, it's, uh, in a word, it isn't very precise. Uh, uh, because the, the, the neural uh, technology is uh, analog. It, it isn't uh, uh, digital. If, if, you, if it were completely digital, you could, uh, you could expect the same results uh, uh, the next day. But it, it, isn't, uh, it isn't like that at all. It, it, it's that... Uh, 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 what they call the, 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 the neurons have to have to be uh, weighted and, and uh, the, the, uh, the circuitry which uh, has been uh, has come into my hands doesn't give me the, uh, 
the possibility of uh, recording it uh, uh, precisely. So it drifts overnight or <laughs> instantly. Of course, it, it could can drift uh, overnight. So the, the the performance of it is is like a uh, a continuous trying to excite the the neurons uh, uh, to speak. And uh, so, uh, in a nutshell, this this uh, piece uh, depends upon. Uh, uh, different, uh, I would have to call them passes, passes uh, which are performed uh, with the, the, my neural uh, synthesizer. Uh, and the, those results uh, uh, were recorded. And, and, uh, for purposes of, of uh, my musical uh, energies and my, my musical, uh, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my musical uh, vocabulary. Uh, uh, I further uh, uh, modify it. The, the signals which I obtain from the synthesizer, <coughs> but uh, I don't do very uh, very much uh, in that that respect. I, uh, I very soon, after uh, working with it, uh, 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 realized that I didn't have to do very much. The main problem was to excite the, the neurons to, uh, to speak. And uh, well, I'm now in a very different situation, uh, and uh, uh, because uh, the uh, the Intel Corporation uh, was pleased by the fact that I had used this, this to <laughs> to make a, a product that uh, uh, was of interest. Uh, uh, to the company, and uh, they were pleased enough uh, so that they gave me the the uh, 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 the processor which weights the, the, the chips. So now I'm in a, in a in a uh, situation where I can record what's been done, and. Uh, I can put it on, on, on a computer and, and I'll, I'll know that, that uh, one, one pass, one, one attempt to produce uh, signals is the result of a, of a specific uh, set of conditions. Um, and so far I, I haven't been able to do that, but I, uh, my position was that uh, I didn't really need to do need to do that because uh, it's very uh, well it's a completely analog technology and, and there's no input there's no input the in inputs are the the, the, uh, the outputs uh, so it is uh, how would you describe it? It gets hot? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's <laughs> it gets hot. It gets hot and bothered. <laughs> yeah, say. It's, it's exactly it. it, <laughs> it you, you understand. Well, I was, I was going to pull out a, a very dry word of, of the, instable, but I think hot and bothered. It's completely <laughs> yeah. But I think, I, from my um, experience working with you, I think that instability is one of the primary motivating forces in a lot of the pieces of music that you do, that um, the networks that you create, even before the, the incredibly dense feedback network of the neural network, were based on systems that were in a very unstable state. And, and, and relatively small changes on, on the part of the performer 
would introduce cataclysmic changes in the, in the overall uh, texture of sound. I, think. Um, I don't mean it to, to sound extremely nerdy and geeky here. I'm pushing my glasses mm -hmm. back on my nose. But um, you have um, almost exclusively worked with analog uh, technology um, in terms of your work. I know that now you're, you're talking about using a computer in conjunction with the neural network. But, um, you sort of steadfastly adhered to the, the sort of the, the the nuance and the resolution of, of analog of the analog world at a time when a lot of digital technology uh, was um, sort of changing the face of a lot of electronic music as people heard it through say pop music and things like that. Um, do you have any any sort of uh, uh, five or ten choice words about sort of your, your feeling about the, the, the nature of the analog world versus the digital world in terms of its its musical meaning for you. So, well, you can easily see from my history that uh, I'm very well, I'm very familiar with, with the uh, analog techniques and very sensitive. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't want to reject any, any possibility which, which can come uh, to me from you know, using digital uh, synthesis. Uh, and uh, I have that, I have used uh, digital synthesizer, but uh, 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 my experience. Uh, uh, causes me uh, to to make a distinction between between uh, an analog and, and uh, digital. The the, uh, the thing about this uh, the technology which is, is used in uh, uh, in this uh, uh, neural network uh, well uh, neural net network technology is it's so vast uh, in terms of number that that uh, uh, one step which uh, I'm going to uh, to, to make uh, very gladly will be to to use it digitally and uh, to find out uh, if that uh, makes it easier uh, to control and uh, I think it will. At least it will be uh, uh, more uh, predictable. And then, then I'll, I'll, because of my being a ornery, <laughs> once I've done that, I'll, I'll again try to make it uh, unstable. But that, that, uh, uh, that chip uh, actually it, it consists of, of uh, 256 uh, circuits, so you you could uh, uh, quite easily uh, uh, well, well, what's the word uh, dedicate a whole series of of, uh, of, uh, of neurons to do what a single thing, which is the digital principle. Well, I know that that um, a lot of your pieces from the uh, from the seventies, in particular, were scored for large numbers of an individual circuit module. Um, that in many cases you weren't able to realize in a live situation because replicating rather complex circuits in a large number was just impossible from a from a time standpoint. I think Untitled was one example of such a piece. And you came up with various ways of, of recording material generated with one of these circuits and then processing it by that circuit. So I would gather that the, the advantage of the neural net is that you get that density of <coughs> multiplied circuitry that you sort of anticipated in your work for at least 20 years, but just had physically not been capable of existing before now. Um, to, to, um, here it is. Yeah, here it is. Um, to, to get to the uh, the question of the sound, the actual sound of it, I was struck by um, how speech-like 
a lot of the material that comes out of it is. And, and in the sense of literally, I, it sounds like a cliche, but of a voice uh, crying out to be heard, that is um, the sort of the, the first uh, instances of a child starting to speak, you know, differentiating from a cry to, to, a, to a, an articulated word. And um, I know that you've done a number of pieces that either overtly make reference to speech, like dialects, and I believe you have these called phonies, too. Exactly. Yeah. And it seems as though that the, both the rhythm and the uh, sort of sound properties of speech are something that's wrong <coughs> through your music for quite some time. Um, is this a, a sort of a conscious interest on your part, or is this just something that, that's kind of um, appeared from the material as, as you've worked with it in time? Uh, well, uh <laughs> I've been conscious that it that it's there and that it's possible to do it. That, that's why I entitled a piece called uh, uh, Phonemes. That was one of the, the first one, and then then uh, uh, another one. Uh, there was an intermediary which. Uh, 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 I admired a, a book by Carson McCullers, I think that's her name, and it's called Likeness to Voices, and I, I, I entitled a piece called Likeness to Voices, but then I, I put a sub, subtitle, Dialects, <laughs> and that's how that, that piece uh, uh, got started. But uh, uh, when I, I did it, See, I don't know how to you know, recover the, um, the process uh, well enough to uh, describe it. I think it was uh, a process of uh, going between uh, speech and uh, discrete uh, discrete tones. I guess I would have to describe it like that, and vice versa. And that's why I called uh, called it uh, dialects because uh, uh, according to the the, uh, the way that you uh, imagine uh, the sound. I'm, I'm saying that uh, I'm listening to the sound, and it, it the next sound I, I, I produce because the, the previous one reminds me of something either resembling speech or going uh, toward music, and uh, I, I tried to uh, uh, come up with a title which would uh, <coughs> express that. So it turned out to be a dialect because I I realized it, it isn't speech. It's not not speech. It's something uh, uh, in between. Well, I don't know whether I've told you anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one other thing I was reminded of tonight, which. I'm reminded of actually every time we get together and have to play on the same program because it's, it's a point you, you, you've been waggling your finger at me about for many years now, which has to do with time, time durations. That um, uh, you work with, with very large scale time forms uh, that are rather unusual in electronic music these days. I think that there is a tendency towards a shorter and shorter discrete time among a lot of people. I won't name names. Um, but you're, you work with uh, very long structures. I mean, I think, I think we were talking yesterday about how 60 minutes is sort of like a, like a starting point for a lot of your pieces. That that's, it, it's, it's almost as if um, <coughs> the material gets warmed up in the course of, of around a 60 minute period. And, 
they can go longer, but to cut them down much shorter very often uh, is just not possible for the way you work. Can you say anything about the, the way you think of structuring time in, in, those, in those large blocks and sort of um, how you approach manipulating or not manipulating sound over periods of time that are, that are that long? Well, for me, there's, uh, there isn't any, there's no time. There's just experience. And experience takes the time uh, that it takes. So uh, if you if you tell me uh, in advance <laughs> what length of time that I need to uh, encompass, I begin begin to think about it because uh, I'm, I'm uh, you know a human being. My consciousness uh, has uh, <coughs> has limits, which I, I tend to ignore. But it, uh, that's the, the fact that, that uh, I think about uh, performing for for one hour very differently than I think about performing uh, for an hour and a half, uh, or for for two hours, or as I have done. Uh, uh, <coughs> I believe in Amsterdam. I performed for three hours. Didn't I do that with uh, my piece, uh, Rainforest, which was installed? That, that that piece is designed to have no time. Uh, it can last uh, uh, any length of time. That itself is a different uh, uh, is a different circumstance. And if you imagine. Uh, yourself in, into a timeless uh, situation, and, and you 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 realize that it's all a, a question of uh, attention and, and uh, how, how to keep uh, uh, listening uh, uh, to yourself. If 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 I don't listen to myself, uh, uh, you won't hear any differences. <laughs> But uh, that is uh, the differences that you hear will be uh, uh, more or less uh, uh, environmental. But it, they they will be differences that, that uh, I, I myself have, have uh, produced. I mean, rain, rainforest <coughs> is uh, is a good example because I think that's a piece that's been misunderstood by a lot of people as being an installation. Um, rather than a performance, because the durations are so long, um, and because it's it's very frequently been presented in museums, just because of the size of space is needed to do it. But um, I mean, it's clear from from working within the structure of that that um, it's a performed work. It doesn't exist as a, as a static object or an object with a kind of a, uh, a predetermined or a random uh, time framework associated with it. difference between that uh, uh, that uh, situation in, in my feeling is that if you do uh, a work that's environmental which is is actually designed um, for for um, not to require people's attention Some of my pieces are, are very short. And, uh, for instance, uh, I've just been compelled to uh, revive a piece from uh, from the, the late uh, 70s. And I, I did it against my, my, my wishes. But it turned out to be uh, uh, a 
complex proposition because it uh, <coughs> I, I was not able I was not able to uh, perform the piece as I, I conceived it but uh, uh, the, the piece was called uh, the dance was called uh, uh, sound dance and I had a piece uh, which I entitled uh, tone burst which is very particular because it's uh, it was uh, centered around a tone burst gen generator which I uh, uh, soldered myself together and uh, uh, so uh, but it was an outgrowth well uh, Uh, that, that was uh, the last piece in, in the chain. The previous piece which I did was is the work that, that Nick Collins re remembers as uh, untitled. And so when Merce Cunningham asked me to revive this composition, I completely forgot that, that I had to pay attention to the title. And so I performed it. The only, the only uh, possibility that I had to uh, recover the sound uh, that I did in sound dance uh, was by using uh, similarly uh, produced uh, 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 material. I mean, uh, similar in the sense that the same uh, processes in the electronic hookup I did in, in Untitled, that was the, the year previous. <coughs> And I performed it with you. I'll just ask one last question because I, I know it's getting to be a matter of life and death here, which is uh, <laughs> <laughs> perhaps appropriate. It's the question of, of loudspeakers, which is something I think we've talked about on many, many occasions. But um, uh, th there is some mysterious property in your music which, which leads one to uh, view the loudspeaker in a rather different different way than normal. And uh, uh, there were several moments tonight where that, that speaker in particular came out uh, as a soloist in, in a very <coughs> overt way. And, and it, it had a very uh, sort of acoustic, acoustic presence. It no longer seemed like a conduit for sound that was being produced somewhere else and being played back through there, but it, it was literally speaking. And um, I know this is a characteristic that, that you've worked with for some time, and you've always admonished composers inside electronics to you know, not just think of it as a playback system for sound, but, but think of it as, as, a, uh, as an instrument, uh, which is a very nice thing to tell us, except it seems to be a very difficult thing to accomplish. How, uh, how is it that you, you, you get that character out of electronic music where it doesn't seem as though it's some sort of playback of sound, but it does seem as though the speaker is actually a, almost as if it was the speaker that was a live musician. Do you know what I'm talking about? Am I being too vague? Yeah, I, I certainly do, but uh, well, I have to say uh, I've been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I've been lucky, but it's a, it's a matter of searching it's a matter of uh, searching for that circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 sometimes you, you can uh, you know uh, you could uh, record a piece and then uh, perform it and imitate and imitate uh, live pr procedures but uh, I, I don't do that because uh, well, normally I don't do it, but upon occasion I have resorted to that. So, so I had to uh, I had to make a piece uh, uh, again for the the, uh, the dance company. Uh, there was uh, it had to be very quiet. And, and so uh, 
I, I thought in terms of, of uh, uh, subtraction. Uh, so so I added a lot of stuff together, uh, which I had had, had removed the the the. the uh, uh, the, like the uh, uh, the things which uh, which could sound sound like uh, like an instrument, I removed it to the point that it it, it would only suggest that, that it was there in the distance, and then over that uh, I put a, a, a tape which I uh, assembled. Uh, which uh, uh, it did its, uh, in order to be like a, a wandering voice, so that, that, that I, I, had a, I, I had a device which would send it around to uh, uh, continuously, but in, in different uh, speeds and in, in different, uh, well, you know, it's, electronic performance, so you, you can make it appear differently in, in uh, different locations, but, I, but I, I had it wandering so that it was above, it, it was above the, the, like a, a little cacophony of, 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 of undistinguishable uh, sounds, and, and that, uh, that worked uh, very well. But it, the only reason why uh, that, that succeeded was that, that I had it in control of, uh, uh, of a, an attenuator that, that was uh, continuously variable by touch. So uh, for me, uh, uh, touch is, 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 is very important.